What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and today I'm presenting a pretty highly requested video on my channel. I originally was going to make a level 1 to 99 farming guide, but since there's actually so much to pack into it, I've decided to break it up into a few different farming guides. Today's video is a beginner's farming guide aimed to get you from level 1 to level 35 by doing three different methods. But on top of that, I'm literally going to explain every single thing that you need to know about farming like items, clients, teleports, and pretty much everything. In the coming few days, you'll see a herb run guide, a tree run guide, and also a 35 to 99 farming guide with quantities of different plants that you need to farm to get to level 99. In the description, I'm going to put links to these videos. So if you're watching this a little while after I release this one, those videos will definitely be available on YouTube for you to watch. From level one, the best way to get your farming up very, very quickly is actually through questing. All the quests that you should do are on the screen right now and provided you do all of these quests it'll actually get you straight to level 35 farming and along with that you'll get the magic secateurs which are a vital farming tool. I've also included the correct order that you should follow to do the quests so that you don't have to train any farming in between so if you can definitely follow that. Now if you don't enjoy quests or would rather just farm the traditional way this guide is for you. You have to start off farming allotments, potatoes to be precise. I'm going to get into that in a moment, but even if you're going to be doing the quests to get to level 35, I'd really recommend watching the rest of this video because it has all the basics for farming, which are really going to help you later on. But before I get into the farming stuff, I need to start off with the basics. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the items that you need. A no brainer here is that you need to bring the seeds that you want to plant. No shit. Depending on what type of plant you're farming, you'll need a different number of seeds to plant it. Like some allotments take three seeds, herbs take one seed, so it varies a bit. So my recommendation is to just carry an excess of seeds with you, so a lot of them. Now, if you're farming trees or fruit trees, it's a little bit different. You need to buy a plant sapling, which are inside plant pots. You can buy these saplings off the GE, but you can also make the sapling with a trowel, a plant pot full of dirt, and the tree seed, and then you water the tree seed in the plant pot and it grows into a sapling. Now on top of the seeds, you'll need to bring a few other tools. A rake is used to remove the weeds from a patch before you plant stuff. A seed dibber is needed to plant the seeds in the first place. The spade is used to actually harvest the final crop. A watering can can be useful at low levels, but they don't actually speed up the growth of crops as you'd expect, so they're not overly needed. Watering a patch keeps it watered for one growth cycle, not the whole growth time. Every plant has about four growth cycles. It varies from plant to plant, but so when you water it, one of these growth cycles will not get diseased at all. So it will be watered for one of them. You'll have to go back to that plant and then water it again for the next growth cycle to prevent disease. Compost is really, really, really important at low levels and also at high levels if you're farming herbs, but essentially compost lowers the chance of a crop becoming diseased and it also increases the yield of a crop. Super compost does the same as compost, but it's way more effective. So at low levels, if you're farming allotments, which is going to be the bulk of this guide, your XP really depends on how many things you harvest. So if you take a super compost, you'll get like double the experience out of each patch. Super compost and compost can be bought directly from the Grand Exchange. So if you're not an Iron Man, definitely get them no matter what. Your choice of gaming client can actually really change your farming experience as well. My favorite is the conduit client since it has a full list of farming timers and it tells you when patches are fully grown, tells you if they're diseased or anything like that. The OS Buddy one does do that too, but I think it's a pro feature so you have to pay for it and Conduit is free. If you're not using any clients, so you're just on the regular client, you can use an amulet of nature, which you use on a certain patch, and then it tells you their health and their growth through an in-game interface, but the Conduit and OS Buddy interfaces are way simpler and way easier to understand. The last item you really, really need, especially at lower levels, is the Magic Secator from fairy tale part one and these increase your yield of crops from allotments and herbs by 10% and 10% 
is literally a 10% XP increase almost at lower levels since you'll be farming allotments. There are also a few quests and teleports from diaries and things like that that you definitely should get if you want to farm fully efficiently. I'm going to list them all on the screen right now. I'm not going to talk about them because that's really boring and would probably take a few minutes to read through them all. So pause the video if you want to have a read or come back to it later when you want to get more efficient with your farming. Time to get into the leveling part of the guide. Now there's a lot of allotment patches in RuneScape, so it's up to you which ones you want to use or which ones are convenient. Now, once you've chosen some patches, you also need to grab seeds, obviously. Starting with potatoes at level one, you can actually pay the gardener to watch your patch. And what it does is it removes all possibility that your patch will become diseased. So for those that don't know, you can pay gardeners to look after your patches for pretty much every type of patch, except for herb and flower patches. As payments for the gardener, you can go into your farming guide by clicking the farming icon on your skills list, and it tells you what the payment is for each crop. You can take these items in noted form to the farmer or the gardener and it will prevent the crop from getting diseased. Super compost also works perfectly fine for all the patches. So I would definitely recommend using that. But if you're doing tree patches, you definitely should pay the gardener because the tree and fruit tree seeds are worth a lot and you don't want that getting disease. Also, it takes a huge chunk of XP out if they do die. Okay, back to potatoes. From level one, you should just plant as many potato allotments as you can all across RuneScape and always use super compost on them. These potatoes will take 40 minutes to grow. And if you do enough across the map, you'll probably get to like level five or even seven ish or more after the first run. Now on your second run, you should definitely plant marigolds in every single flower patch that you're doing allotments because having a fully grown marigold, that actually prevents the probability of getting a disease on potatoes, onions, and tomatoes. So they're so helpful until you reach level 20 for sweet corn. A really, really useful pointer for farming herbs, allotments, or anything else that uses some kind of harvest that you can use the harvest in your inventory. So say I get potatoes and I have an invent full of potatoes, you can use that on the tool leprechaun and he'll note them all for you. And then you can just keep harvesting and then noting them so you don't have to go to the bank. The leprechaun also holds on to your farming supplies so you can give him rakes, spades, dibbers, trowels, secateurs, and you can also give him compost to hold on to, including super compost. So it's a pretty good idea to fill him up with all the items. So in case you forget something while you're farming, you can just talk to him and get it off him and then give it back to him when you're done. There's a leprechaun at every single patch in RuneScape, but they all carry the same stuff. So say I give something to one leprechaun, every single leprechaun will have that item for me. At level three, you unlock barley, which is a hop patch, and you should definitely get into these at lower levels since they give pretty good harvesting XP yield. These are the locations for hop patches. Choose ones that suit your allotment runs and always use super combos. They take about the same time to grow as allotments do. So the best idea here is to do an allotment and a hop run in the same run about once every hour. So on the screen right now, I'm gonna put all the seeds you should be planting and at what level in terms of allotments and hops. You also unlock Guam herbs at level nine farming, but seriously don't bother with these unless you're an Iron Man because Iron Men need to train herb law and that's a really good source of Guam herbs. But honestly, don't bother if you're a regular player because they get diseased a lot and they can get pretty annoying. Plus the XP yields aren't even that good. At level 20 farming, you unlock sweet corn, which are really good XP for allotments since you get such a huge harvest out of them. At level 23, you can plant a scarecrow into the flower patch and that actually protects your sweet corn from disease. Then once you get level 26, you can start farming limpwort roots in the flower patch because that'll give you a lot of XP and pretty decent money. In the allotments, keep planting sweet corns, even though it's not gonna be protected from the scarecrow, but this time you should pay the farmer 10 jute fibers, which is the payment for sweet corn for each patch so he looks over them and they don't get diseased. Now taking a bit of a step back, you can actually farm oak trees at levels 15 farming, but honestly, it is not worth your time since they only give 467 XP per patch and they take a solid three and a half hours to grow. So you're better off just focusing on other patches until you unlock higher level trees. On that note, you should start farming apple trees 
at, which are a type of fruit tree at level 27. Then at level 30, you should start on willows, which are also pretty decent experience. I'm not going to go into detail about tree runs, as I've said, and keep an eye out for my fruit and tree running guide because that'll cover everything you need to know about these. So simply just follow the guidance on the screen right through until you hit level 35. And then from there, you can check out my expert farming guide, which is coming soon, which will get you all the way from level 35 to 99 farming. There are a lot of different other patches you can plant like bushes, mushrooms, cactuses, but in terms of training, the methods that I've shown in this video are the most efficient and the easiest to do for low level farmers. Before I finish, there's actually one more method which is sort of good for XP, but honestly, you're probably better off just getting into the groove of actual farming instead because this method is not really farming. You can check the pinned comment in the comment section below about the alternate method that I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into detail in this video because I might make a separate video about it soon. But really, you should just stick to the guidance with allotments that I've given in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and hopefully you can finally get cracking on farming if you're still a low level. But anyways guys, it's now time for clip of the day and today's clip is from Best at War. Recently, Jagex introduced Tournament Worlds with a Fight Cave Portal option to get you prepared for the Inferno, which is coming soon on the 1st of June. Well, Best at War here did the whole Fight Cave in a Tournament World and actually managed to get the Jad Pet after he completed it on a Tournament World. Sadly, you log out and you lose everything. You don't get the pet back and you won't be getting that in the real game. It's just lost off your Tournament World account. But still, that's so awesome to get. Pretty funny as well. So it's sad that you can't keep it. But yeah, nice work, man. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. Also, subscribe if you're new. And as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.